question that a person is a kleptomaniac. He is obsessive stealing. Okay, so they catch him in Target stealing and the store detective hauls him in and they take him to, I don't know if they have kangaroo courts, you know, quick thing in, in, in the USA, but like in, in other countries they have kangaroo courts. Somebody gets caught shoplifting right away. And if you get caught shoplifting in Arab country, that is not nice. Okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <coughs> okay, so let's say in a democratic country that doesn't have Sharia, and he gets caught, and then says, the detective says, this person stole such and such and such and such. Okay. And the guy can't deny it. And he says, Your Honor, he pleads, like what the murder pleads, temporary insanity. He said, he pleads permanent insanity. He says, I can't help myself. I'm not guilty. Okay, so what does the judge do? He's got a choice. He gets him, checks him out. He says, a kleptomaniac. There's a court psychiatrist. And of course, the guy checks him out. Is he a bona fide kleptomaniac or not? Okay, so one of two things is going to happen to him. If he is not a kleptomaniac, he's going to jail. And if he is a kleptomaniac, he's going to go to a psychiatric institution. But he's not going back on the street. He's not going back on the street. So, wait a second. The Torah says, thou shalt not steal. The person says, uh, he can't keep that. He says he was born a kleptomaniac. Now the question is, well, I'm not going to answer now. Is this true? Is it not? Is there such a thing as inborn? Is there a, a gene for kleptomania? Let's assume there is. Let's assume there is. Okay. Let's assume there's a gene for kleptomania, and a person could have a, a, a gene for kleptomania on his chromosome chain. He's a kleptomaniac. But the Torah says not to do it. And there's no such thing as the Almighty giving a person something he can't do. And the Talmud expressly emphasizes in several different places that the Almighty doesn't willfully knock a person down. Doesn't knock a person down at all. Does not give something a person can't do. When a person complains of a difficulty in life, if that person gets a difficulty in life, the Almighty would not give it to him were it not his soul correction, were he not capable of overcoming. Okay. So what do you do? The guy's got kleptomania. Now let's get help. Let's overcome it. And let's learn not to steal. And they can have a society with, you know, and people use the excuse, they're kleptomania. Even were it genetic. I'm saying for the sake of argument. So we have something that the Torah calls an abomination. And there are many people who say, yeah, but the Torah forbids it. Forbids it. We've got to get to work. We've got to get to work. And there's help. There are people that are capable of helping to overcome this. But the point is, we don't argue with, when we believe in the Torah, we don't argue with the Torah. Now, there's all types of movements in Judaism that are compromised movements. I'll give you an example. Everybody here learned chemistry? Okay, you learn chemistry, you've got a name of a pure chemical. You have a pure chemicals. The moment we mix the compound, Okay, it's not the pure chemical anymore. If we take chlorine and we put a sodium ion with the chlorine, it becomes NaCl, becomes salt. The chlorine, voila, it becomes salt. It's not chlorine anymore. It's sodium chloride. It's not chlorine anymore. This is something very basic. It has a complete change. It has a complete change. We have Judaism. Judaism equals Torah, equals 613 commandments. I don't care what you call it. People call it you know, observant Judaism or Lithuanian Judaism. Or, okay. All these are talking about Torah Judaism. We have Torah Judaism. And there are many groups under Torah Judaism, but in Torah Judaism, maybe one person will be dressed in a long coat. Maybe another person will be dressed in a shorter coat. Maybe one guy will have a beard. Maybe one guy will shave an electric razor. Nobody will shave his face with a straight razor. Okay, this is part of Torah. It's a commandment of Torah. Commandment of Torah. Nobody will violate the Sabbath. Nobody will violate the Kashrut laws. Maybe one person might eat from this particular rabbinical authority, and one person might eat from this particular rabbinical authority, but when it comes down, they all believe in the same thing. Now we have a 
all types of adjectives, whether they can be progressive or uh, reconstructionist or conservative or reformed or whatever, 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 pl plug in whatever you want. And what this does is, and like in marksmanship, what is a true marksman? When there is a target on the wall and you fire a shot and boom, bullseye. Okay, what is a fake marksman? That he can't shoot straight, so he takes his gun, shoots a hole in the wall, and then draws a bullseye around the hole. That would be me. Okay. So we do one thing. What does a Torah observant individual do? It says, what does the Holy Torah say? And now I am going to make my life according. I'm going to lead my life according. But other people say, what do I want to do? and then build an ideology around that. For example, if a person has his eye on the neighbor's wife, that is incongruent with Torah. You can't have the neighbor's wife in Torah. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So what they do is make some new ideology. If a person likes McDonald's cheeseburgers, he can't have McDonald's cheeseburgers in Torah. So he decides that the kosher laws from way back when, because it was hygiene and you can't have pork because pork had trigonosis, but nowadays in modern refrigeration, the Torah is no longer relevant. Uh, uh, sorry, Charlie, with the old the tuna commercial. Sorry, Charlie. No, Torah is very relevant, as we see with the coronavirus. So we still have our, our, our kashrut laws. A person thinks all types of different things. He wants to go to the synagogue on Shabbat, yeah, it's nice. And he wants to go to the golf course after that in his car. Oh, but wait a second. In Torah Judaism, you can't go to the synagogue and go to the golf course or go to the golf course on Shabbat. You, you can't do that. Oh, so now we are going to make a new form of Judaism and we're going to move a parking lot. We're going to have a parking lot right next to the synagogue. We're still going to call it a synagogue. We're still going to use all the things. Okay. And then somebody says something else that, uh, you know, this compromise, this compromise, this compromise, and you call themselves. So what they're doing is they're firing the shot and then drawing a system around them. That's not truth. First, we decide what truth is, and then we govern ourselves accordingly. Is it true? Yes, yes. If it's not true, let's go down the road and find truth. But if it's true, this obligates us. But we don't build an ersatz truth around what we believe in. The Nazis believed that they were the super race. The Nazis believed that the Aryans were the great race. The Nazis thought they were very humane and very cultured. There's no society in history that ever had such cruelty to animal laws as the Nazis. If someone kicked a dog or a cat in the street and a policeman saw, they could be pulled in. That's cruelty to animals. Cruelty to animals was outlawed utterly outlawed in Nazi Germany. But you could turn around and burn six million Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the problem of human values. And when humans divine their own system, we do not have that in the Torah. We do not have the Torah. Everything we get in the Torah is divine. And it's here today, I could go on and on and on in areas of political science, in areas of science, in areas of... Oh, there. And once again, I wasn't born into it. And everything. I came to this with my own journey and my own searching, <coughs> which was not easy, and involved getting slapped around plenty. And uh, this was the only way I could find answers. The only way, peace of mind, tried everything, all kinds of cheap thrills and all kinds. I didn't try drugs. I was always took care of myself and I was an athlete. I never went that route. <coughs> but uh, we did everything else. And university, we did everything else that American kids do in university. And we did stuff that soldiers do in the army. Soldiers are known for all kinds of stuff. Hashem emet v'Torah Torah emet. Hashem is truth and his Torah is truth. And I'll close with one little interesting thing. Moses goes up on Mount Sinai and he says, <coughs> Almighty God, I want to get to know you. What is your name? Yeah, what is your name? Okay. Nobody says, you don't need to know my name. He says, yes, I need to know. How do I address you? And the Almighty says, Ekia Asha Ekia, I am that I am. Mm -hmm. If we write it in Hebrew, 
I said the Hebrew language, the language of the Bible is very holy, and every letter has a numerical value. And there's such unbelievable secrets in the Torah. Google secrets of Torah, you see fantastic things. The word ekye, it has a numerical value of 21. Aleph is a one, two hays, five and five, and a yud of 10, 21. Asher means multiplication because when Leah had more sons than was allotted to the other three wives of Jacob, and she gave her son Asher, ki shruni banot, because Hashem has greatly multiplied my offspring. So we take what well, Hashem reveals his name, ekya asher ekya, 21 times 21. Okay, we're from the age that we didn't have computers, we got multiply in our head, 441. 21 times 21 is 441. The Hebrew numerical value of truth is tough and emet, aleph mem tough, one four four hundred four forty one. So God's name is truth. He is truth, and His name is truth. And you just have to look, and just have to search, and you have to want to know. And if you say, Almighty God, help open my eyes, help me get to know You, He's going to do it. He'll be happy to do it. He says, You want me to part of Your life? I'll be happy to be a part of Your life. And I mean. Tell everyone what a delight it is to meet you and to spend uh, an hour together learning. And Bo Hashem, if you like, we bought a few copies of our, our book, Three Words of Amuna. Uh, welcome to purchase it. And I have my other one, P Path to Your Peak. It's a, we really got kind of cleaned out left. I kind of underestimated the community. We didn't bring enough books. But we still have, uh, I mean, this is my brand new one. And uh, if you like to purchase, I'll be happy to sign it for you. Sell them for $10 a piece. And everybody can take one of these. Okay, one of these. This is no one, but this is, gives uh, our podcast every day. Things that we're talking about now, we have a daily podcast. Pass these around to everyone, okay? Pass everyone. Take one of these. I got one last night. And it'd be a pleasure. And. Thank you, thank you, and every blessing shall be blessed with all the best in material and spiritual abundance and all your heart's wishes for the best of me. Amen. 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 Amen.